On November 8, 2003, a new bridge was inaugurated in California. This bridge is the longest suspension bridge built in the United States in 40 years. We are the largest suspension bridge since the Verrazano Narrows was built in 1964. And in the Bay Area, it's been since the Golden Gate Bridge in 1936. This bridge incorporated a number of technological firsts in its three and a half year construction. As important an engineering feat as this bridge is, it's even more than that. This bridge is named after a bridge builder, not a financier or an engineer. It's named after an iron worker, and it's named in tribute to all the hardworking members of the building and construction trades who build this nation's bridges, roads, buildings, and power plants. It's the Al Zampa Memorial Bridge, and it spans the Carquinez Strait from Crockett to Vallejo on I-80. Many of the people I'm looking at today had something to do with building this bridge. Working Californians have contributed enormously to our economy. And so it is my honor today to honor a working class hero when I name this bridge the Alfred Zampa Memorial Bridge. My dad started on this Carquinez Bridge in 1926, just being a young guy himself. He worked on the construction of every major bridge in the Bay Area. He actually fell off the Golden Gate Bridge and lived to tell about it. I remember dad saying it in some interviews about, oh, we ought to say uh, to Helen back. And he said, no, no, no. He said, we're iron workers, we're only about halfway there. And here's what uh, Mr. Zampa said about himself sometime later. He said, I've climbed halfway to heaven and fallen halfway to hell. Neither place seemed to want me, so I just kept on working. That's a pretty good attitude, don't you think? In over 100 years, this is the first time we've ever had a bridge named after one of our iron workers, let alone a construction worker. It's long overdue because we've, we've, we've put in so many hours, we've lost a lot of lives on bridges that have been built throughout this country, and uh, it just makes me very proud that, that I'm an iron worker. A very fortunate guy, my dad. He died at 95. He was on a pension for 30 years. I talk about having a pretty good ride. You know, he did that, enjoyed it, and bragged about drawing a union pension all that time. I was fortunate enough to have two generations of iron workers before me. I've got uh, an older brother that's also entered the iron workers. And I looked forward to it when I was in high school, getting out of school and entering the workforce and being a union iron worker. Uh, my family got me into the trade. My, uh, my father's mother's brothers were both iron workers. My dad's operator, my grandpa was, my great grandpa was. I'm a third generation iron worker. My grandfather was an iron worker, started off uh, back in the 20s. And uh, he actually, in fact, started uh, working on this older portion of the Carquinez Bridge. And then my father got in the trade and he worked on the 59 side bridge there and then just so happened I ended up working on this new one so we had the opportunity to all three of us work on some facet of this Carquinez Strait so it's been a privilege. I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge the people who made this bridge possible. The hundreds of employees of Caltrans who worked on this, all of the contractors from C.C. Myers, from Flatiron, from Cleveland Bridge, everyone who participated. And think about the 800 working men and women that built this bridge. The union iron workers, operating engineers, cement masons, carpenters, laborers, and numerous other crafts that made this a reality. People who don't know, it's a lot of sweat, blood, and tears out here. You know, it was a lot of hard work over time and seven days a week, you know, it was a lot of strong working men out here. I remember the day that I was given the dispatch to come out here. I knew then how monumentous this was going to be, uh, what it represented to iron workers, to tradesmen throughout the uh, state in terms of union work, and uh, that's all real important to me. They floated the concrete just like a, a bathtub right down here, put it over the pile, sank it right over the pile, and that was the start, the start of the tower. And then we poured the concrete, we, we put the tower cranes up, Started the towers, built the towers, poured every other day. We poured on the west side one day, east side the next, brought it right all the way up. 
Right now I'm erecting cable bands. Today in particular I'm running the winch. I've, uh, I did the spinning of the wire, did part of that. So I've lots of different work out here. I have been working high up on the tower and all over. I've been all over the bridge. But mostly I stay on the ground in the crane. I mainly move materials and do it, try to do it safely. Oh, there's lots of scary things, but you don't, uh, crane operators don't want to show fear. Then the guys that are working underneath the hook are afraid. <laughs> crane operating is hours of boredom punctuated by moments of terror. <laughs> there's no fear factor. As far as the journeyman, this is all a learning experience for all of us because we have never done it. Well, we have the skills and the knowledge, but we've never built a bridge like this, but we've been taught at school and through different jobs. That, and we know a rough idea what to do. The company who is the experts on it just give us the information and we go from there. You see high rises going up every day. You see a casino going up in, around Las Vegas, Reno. But you don't see this, the suspension bridge. Very, very seldom. Let's go, Sparky! Yes! I came on this bridge as an apprentice and I journeyed out. And I'm proud to be an operating engineer and I'm proud to be a part of this bridge opening. It's part of history and I'm saving all the memorabilia for my grandchildren so they can say, my grandma worked on that bridge right there. I can come back maybe 20, 30 years from now and tell my grandkids when I have some one day or even my kids of my own and say, look what dad did, help build, you know. So it's a nice experience, you know, and it'll be with me for the rest of my life. I'm very happy. I brought my kids so they can see what, what we build, and uh, I'm proud of what we build. It's the pride of feeling that you've been on a project, and like this one will be here for many years. You can drive over it and pass it and, and say, hey, I've had a hand in help build that. And, uh, you know, the legacy that continues with that. Remember forever what I did, you know, and, I, and I'm still happy because when I, I'm coming back and I'm still here to look and see how this is finished. We completed the project on time and without one fatality. Yes, Dad, Dad would be proud, I'm proud, and every construction worker should be proud of this dedication. Thanks. It's quite an honor, beyond what it means to me as uh, him being my grandfather. It's just a fantastic honor for working people. It's very seldom that a working person is, uh, is honored in such a way. As you walk across the bridge, recognize that this is not only about Al Zampa, this is about every construction worker in this country, the ones that came before, the ones that will come after, and it's a historic event that I am proud to be at, honoring working men and women in this country. Thank you.